What's up guys, Asian here again with another uh, theory crafting video. Uh, and today we're going to be discussing uh, basically um, all of the different damage equations that we have in the game and how they all kind of play together and basically what uh, what the game uses basically, the math behind all of the, the games and the builds that a lot of theory crafters put together. Uh, so we're going to be going over a lot of work done by Asayir. Uh, this is actually his post on the uh, Terminal Foundry forums. Uh, it, it hasn't been updated since Horns of the Reach, however the equations themselves haven't changed too much. Uh, there is some text here that reads very weird and that's because uh, this used to be for, I think he started this post at back in Homestead and a couple of things were different between Homestead and Morrowind and all the iterative patches afterwards. So. There is a couple of there are a few wording here that doesn't sound quite right, and that's because it's probably f back from when Homestead uh, was initially released. And then uh, we'll also show you guys um, the UESP's build editor, uh, kind of where you can find the equations on that and where you can play around uh, with build setups that you guys might have, you know, any sort of ideas you have, and use basically the build editor on UESP's website in order to uh, kind of compare them to each other, kind of see uh, what they're all capable of doing. So uh, let's just start off with uh, Asayir's math, and we're going to be starting from the very, very top um, because a lot of these um, equations here uh, are going to be important for the ultimate uh, equation that that uh, is used to kind of a as a metric to compare different builds and different sets and things like that. So the first um, first equation here is going to be the resource pool. Uh, as you can see here, it's pretty. All of these equations are kind of uh, a little bit complex. Uh, they're all basic arithmetic, so there's nothing like, uh, there's no things like exponents, there's, there's not a lot of things. It's usually just addition and multiplication. Um, there's a couple of, you know, parentheses here and there, so you might have to calculate some things first before, you know, doing going through the whole equation. But generally speaking, if you're able to add things, if you're able to multiply things, or if you have access to a calculator, uh, and as long as you know uh, what each of these different variables are stand for and what they are what they are in the game uh, then it should be fairly straightforward to figure things out so resource pool here uh, for example is the quantity base plus your attribute points plus your gear that entire quantity is multiplied by CPI which is uh, I believe it's known as the CP index uh, is what CPI stands for you take that entire quantity and then you add your food bonus you add your Mundus bonus and you add a gear one bonus uh, and then you take that entire quantity and multiply it by skills um, so for here you know, the base uh, he says that CP 160 is 8744 for health and 7958 for magic and stamina uh, attribute points are obviously the number of points you spend into health uh, or any of the attributes it's 122 for health and 111 for magic and stamina so just multiply the amount of attribute points you have by those numbers and then gear is pretty self-explanatory it's pretty much um, almost all gear bonuses so things like uh, your two three four piece bonuses and a couple of five piece bonuses as well are also put under gear um, there are a couple of different uh, gears bonuses that actually fall under the variable gear one uh, he's uh, he's puts out two of the most noticeable ones which are destruction master and necropotence so those actually aren't uh, multiplied by the CP index here then he has an explanation about the CP index so this is basically uh, a boost to uh, your resource pools based on the number of CPs you have. So this max is out at 30, 300 CP, so that's 100 points uh, into each of the trees, and you actually have to put the points into the trees. You can't just be at CP 300 and have the extra resources. You actually have to invest your points into the trees. Uh, so this tops out at 20%. Uh, so once you hit 300 CP, you pretty much get a, a flat 200% boost to your resource pools. Um, so that's kind of uh, how the CPI works. Mundus, pretty self-explanatory uh, for magical users it's going to be the mage for stamina users I believe it is uh, the serpent or I'm not 100% sure which one is which one is it is for the for stamina users um, but you also have to take into consideration that you have to add in all your divines pieces so for example purple divines is 6.5% boost gold divines is 7.5% boost so you just take the sum of that and you basically multiply that by your Mundus value and then skill refers to stat boosting skills so that's typically going to be stuff like Warhorn and things like that. Moving on, uh, so he does all of this stuff in uh, in relation to Magicka DPS because at the time that he made this Magicka Sorcerers were by and far the strongest PvE DPS class or very close to uh, so that's why you see all the spell damage but this is pretty much is translatable across to stamina DPS as well so weapon damage, weapon crit, things like that just replace uh, the appropriate the appropriate terms there. 
So for here, spell damage, pretty self-explanatory. It's any gear bonuses plus your apprentice boost. This is obviously also taking into consideration any sort of divines boost that you have. Take that entire quantity and multiply it by skills. So skills would be something like major sorcery, minor sorcery, any sort of class passives that you might have that boost your spell damage. Pretty self-explanatory there. Recovery is also fairly straightforward. Your base regen, uh, so for Bajka and Stamina here, he said it's 515. For health, it's 309. This is at uh, uh, CP cap, uh, not CP cap, uh, gear cap, I should say. So you take the base, you add in any gear, you add in Atronach, again, taking into consideration any divine pieces, and you add in any drink buff that you have. That entire quantity is then multiplied by um, the boost from skills, and plus whatever bonuses you have into Arcanus, which is that CP passive that boosts Magicka regen. So skills uh, are going to be for magical users. It's going to be major amount of prophecy. Uh, oh no, not major amount of prophecy. Uh, I believe it's intelligence, intellect, uh, and then for stamina users, it's major and minor endurance. Uh, so you take basically, if you have both major and minor intellect, that's 25% plus. Let's say you have 14 points in Arcanus. So basically, that gives you an extra 39% uh, 39% boost to your magical regen uh, from your base plus your gear plus the Atronach stone plus your drink. Uh, other passives also count towards skills as well, so for example, I believe Nightblades have a passive that boosts regen by, I think, 15% or something like that, so that's also considered into skills here. Spell cost, so each uh, ability has its own base cost, and that's going to be different for each tooltip, obviously, and so it's basically that uh, base tooltip cost subtracted from your flat cost reduction. So flat cost reductions are basically um, anything that is... Uh, reduces it by a fixed amount. So the most classic example of this would be reduced spell cost jewelry glyphs. Uh, so those reduced by 203 uh, flat amount at legendary CP160 glyphs for each glyph that you have. So basically, let's say a spell costs 3,000 magicka and you have two uh, reduced spell cost glyphs, you subtract 406 from that 3,000. And then you take that and you multiply it by 1 minus the percent cost reduction. Uh, percent cost reduction, uh, some skills uh, or some classes have a couple of passives that reduce the cost of magicka abilities. Uh, so for example, Templars, I believe, have a 4% reduction. If you're a Breton, you have a 3% reduction to uh, magicka cost abilities. And there are a couple of uh, set pieces normally uh, that um, increase the cost of your abilities. So more like Kina, the two-piece effect there is the example that he uses here. Uh, so that's how spell cost and just cost of abilities in general is, is calculated. Uh, there used to be a CP tree, a CP node that actually reduced cost even further, but they since removed that uh, when they upgraded the game from uh, Homestead to Morrowind, so that doesn't exist anymore. Spell crit and weapon crit, that's pretty straightforward. 219 spell or weapon crit is equal to 1% crit chance. The base crit chance is 2191 or 10%, uh, and so uh, your major and minor buffs are going to be increases to that. So your major crit buffs, so that's major uh, savagery and major prophecy, those are a 10% buff. Your minor prophecy, minor savagery are a 3% buff. Uh, now you have to talk. We have to talk about crit modifiers. So in ESO, uh, you have a chance to do a critical hit with every single attack, and that the probability of that happening is equal to your spell crit or your weapon crit, depending on uh, if you're using a stamina ability or a magicka ability. Uh, when you do deal a critical hit, you will obviously deal more damage. The base amount here is going to be 50% uh, more damage, so if a hit normally deals 2,000 damage and you manage to have a critical hit, it will now deal 3,000 damage instead. Uh, so that is the base modifier, but you can increase the damage that you deal with a critical hit. Uh, and so basically you take uh, this uh, this entire equation here, so it's basically you take the floor of the Shadow Mundus, if you're using it, times the vines, and that's actually floor to the nearest hundredth decimal point here. You add that to the crit, the base crit value, and then you take whatever you have into Elfborn, or uh, Precise Strikes if you're a stamina user, add that, and then you add in any skill you have. So the skill would be uh, Major and Minor Force. Major Force gives you an additional 15%, Minor Force gives you an additional 10%. So uh, if you have both of the Major and Minor Forces active, then you have a base cost, base increase of 75%. Uh, there are a couple of class passives that increase crit damage, so Nightblades and Templars both have uh, abilities or passives that boost uh, their critical damage by 10%, so they just add another 0.5 or 0.1 uh, to the crit modifier. Uh, that's only if they have certain skills active. And then obviously Elfborn or Precise Strikes, that's just additive into it. So if you have, let's say, 11%, it's not times 11%, it's plus 0.11. Now we get to the real beef of this post here, the kind of really interesting part here. So this is going to be the damage calculations portion of the uh, of his post here. 
So base ability tooltip. So each tooltip um, has what's called skill coefficients. So you ha there's three skill coefficients. There's an A, a B, and a C. And all skill coefficients can be found on this website here. So, uh, so it's all on UESB. And if you want to see the skill coefficients, you just hit show skill coefficients here. And you can see here this is A, this is B, and this is C. And then they have a ratio here. So the ratio for a lot of these abilities is going to be about 10.5. So if we go over to like Searing Slash here, you can see 10.46, Fiery Grip, 10.46. If we go to a Destruction Staff ability, uh, Impulse, 10.48, Element, Wall of Elements, 10.47. So it's all around 10.5. Uh, so that's what he mentions here. Uh, so you can actually uh, say, so he says here for B to A uh, is about 10.5 for most abilities. A close approximation would be A prime times Magicka plus B prime times spell damage, where A prime is approximately equal to A and B prime is pro approximately 10.5. And so because B to A is usually constant, there are small fluctuations, but they're not too big. You saw there is like hundredths of a decimal point. Uh, so he says it's common to use the notion of an effective next Magicka pool in order to kind of speed things along. Uh, again, this is a very this is an approximation. It's not the precise tooltip calculation. So anything you see here is actually going to be uh, slightly off. A couple a couple of tens, uh, you know, a couple dozen off. But generally speaking, this is going to be fairly accurate. So it's basically Magicka plus 10.5 times spell damage. Uh, so sometimes you will see this equation be as um, Magicka divided by 10.5 plus spell damage. And that's because if you divide uh, both terms here by 10.5, so this no longer becomes multiplicative, you the 10.5s cancel out and you just get spell damage, but Magicka will still be divided by 10.5. So when you see people say every 10.5 additional Magicka is equal to 1% additional spell damage on a tooltip ability, that's what they're talking about. Uh, so it doesn't really translate well within this form, but if you divide by 10. Point, both these terms by 10.5, uh, then that's how you get that 10.5 max Magicka equals 1 additional spell damage. So, uh, base damage formula. So this is kind of uh, where, uh, this is kind of the stuff that we're really interested in. So base damage is going to be equal to the tooltip times your attacker bonus times one minus mitigation. Now, when we talk about mitigation, we have uh, this equation here. So it's the quantity of the resistances uh, that the mob has minus the armor debuff. Uh, then you take that, times that by one minus percent penetration. You, t you take that entire value and you subtract any sort of flat penetration values that you have. That entire thing is divided by the level of the mob that you're attacking times a thousand. Uh, so player characters are level 66. It's the 50 base levels plus 16 from the um, the old vet uh, system. So you used to be able to get up to vet 116, and so those were counted as extra levels, and those are still coded in the game as such. But mobs are all level 50. So all mobs have some level of resistances. So we kind of talked about this a lot in build videos and theory crafting videos where we have to. You know, where we're talking about penetration values. So the typical resistance value for overland mobs is 9100. Uh, the typical resistance value for dungeon mobs and trial bosses and dungeon bosses are all 18,200. So you basically take this, you subtract any armor debuffs, so that's things like uh, Major Breach, Minor Breach, uh, Major Fracture, Minor Fracture, Alkosh is a, is a armor debuff, Night Mother's Gaze is an armor debuff, Sun of Flames is an armor debuff. So you basically take that completely away from their resistances. And then uh, percent penetration pretty much only comes from uh, maces. So that's going to be, if you have passives under the dual wield line, the twin blade and blunt passives, if you're wielding maces, uh, that I believe that's a 10% additional penetration uh, for each mace that you have. And two-handers also have a very ide an identical uh, passive. So if you're having a maul, for instance, you have a 20% uh, uh, penetration value. Uh, so this... The reason why you don't see a lot of maces and mauls being used in PvE is because the percent penetration is taken into account after all the armor debuffs. So if you consider that you have, for example, Major Breach, Minor Breach, you have uh, Alkosh up, that all combined is about uh, 11,000, about between 11,000 and 12,000 additional penetration. So uh, if you were to have a mace with 20% uh, 
penetration, so you have dual wields maces. Uh, you would think that you would be getting 36, uh, what is it, what would it be, uh, 3640 additional penetration, but that's not actually the case because you're taking all your armor debuffs out of the base value of the resistances before you take the penetration values into consideration. So for example, if you have 18,200 and you're man managing to take away 10,000 of the uh, of that resistances, you're actually only getting 20% of 8,200 rather than the full 18,200. So maces and mauls generally are much weaker than swords, daggers, and axes uh, in that regard because of the, uh, the fact that the armor debuff is taken into consideration before the percentage before the percentage decrease. And then you take away any sort of flat penetration value. So this normally comes from things like spriggans, twice fanged, uh, any sort of CPs that you have into spell erosion or piercing. That's where your flat penetration value is going to be. And then you divide all that by uh, level times a thousand. So if you have uh, if you have eighteen thousand two hundred penetration between armor debuffs and flat penetration, this works out to be um, this works out to be zero. So uh, this becomes uh, 1 minus 0 becomes 1, so that's what we mean when you say we hit penetration cap. Obviously you can't get a negative number here, uh, because it is uh, divided, and this, basically all this is going to be um, positive. Uh, so you can never get a negative number here, so that's why uh, if you go over the penetration cap you actually end up losing damage, because now you're, you're not able to get any higher than 1 here. Additional penetration isn't going to help, you, help, help your base damage at all. Uh, so if you're below the penetration cap, then this will, number will fall between uh, something like, I believe it's like 0.6 to, uh, or rather, uh, 0.4 to, to 0. Uh, so for example, if your mitigation ends up being, let's say, 0.2, then it's 1 minus 0.2, so you're actually doing only 80% of the damage, that full damage that you could be doing there. Uh, so attacker bonus, uh, which is this value here. Uh, has a couple of components behind it. It's your CP bonus plus damage done uh, times damage taken. So damage taken, uh, or damage done I should say, let's start with that, are going to be things from like a minor berserk, major berserk. So those are like the flat percentage increases. Uh, so some classes have uh, a passive. Uh, the best example I can think of is wardens have a passive under the animal companions line that increases damage done for every animal companion skill you have slotted. Uh, so that's where it comes into play. It doesn't affect your spell damage at all. It affects this attacker bonus here. CP bonus, uh, so that comes from all your CP, so for, you know, um, Nastered Arm, Stomaturge, Elemental Expert, or Mighty, uh, so that's where CP bonus comes into play. And damage taken are going to be things like Minor Vulnerability or Concuss, so that's 8% dam additional damage taken. There are a couple of other very specific uh, damage taken debuffs as well, uh, so for example, Engulfing Flames has a 10% uh, damage taken debuff on flame damage uh, to anybody that's hit by Engulfing Flames, so that's kind of uh, where damage taken comes from. Now for average damage, so this is kind of like if you do the same attack like hundreds of times uh, or something like that, this is what average, or rather, uh, average damage, yeah, average damage. So if you do the same attack a hundred times, you remember you still have a chance to crit and you still have your crit damage modifier. So let's say you have 50% chance to crit, you kind of want to take that into consideration when, you, when you're talking about the average damage that you're able to deal. So what it, basically, average damage is just your base damage times 1 plus crit chance times crit modifier. Uh, so basically you're taking your crit chance, you're multiplying it by crit modifier. So for example, if you have 50% crit chance and you have a 75% uh, additional damage for your crit modifier, it stands the reason that whenever you do a crit, since you, half of your hits are going to be crits, half of them are going to get the additional modifier. So you just take the modifier, multiply it by the crit chance, and that's basically how much additional damage you're able to deal um, based on the amount of times you can ex be expected to crit if... Uh, you manage to average 50% uh, of your hits being crits. And that's average damage. And finally, we come to ability metric, which is the, the big, chunky equation that a lot of people use to compare sets and you know, builds. So it's basically uh, Magicka plus 10.5 times spell damage. Multiply that by the attacker bonus. Multiply that by 1 minus mitigation. Multiply that by 1 plus crit chance times crit modifier. So, and again, you can think of this as Magicka divided by 10.5 plus spell damage instead. Um, so this is basically saying uh, we're taking the base damage here, and base damage is uh, this here. So this is your tooltip, multiplied by the attacker bonus here, multiplied by 1 minus the mitigation, multiply, and this is all considered base damage now, then you multiply that by 1 plus crit chance times crit modifier there. And this is the ability metric that theory crafters use to compare different builds. So if we go over to the UESP build editor here, um, you can see here that under computed character statistics, it has all of these statistics here. 
Uh, so this is my build, this is my Magic Nightblade build. I'm actually missing a health enchant, I think. There you go. Yeah, I'm always missing a health enchant here. So let's just take, for example, uh, spell damage here. As you can see here, the item spell damage, so this is taking into consideration things like uh, your weapons. So my weapon, for instance, because it's an infused Inferno Staff, gives me 1335. So that's the item spell damage here. Uh, set spell damage, so this is the amount of spell damage I'm getting uh, from uh, my set pieces. My Munda spell damage, this is coming from uh, my Munda stone, so I am using the Apprentice on this build. Then you can see here, skill and buff. Uh, spell damage. So I don't have any sort of skills that increase my spell damage, so that's a zero. If I did have major sorcery up, this would change at 20% and that would be boosted, my spell damage would be boosted up to uh, 3 to 1, 23 here. Uh, item spell damage, this is also taking into consideration the um, spell damage glyphs that I have on my jewelry pieces. I have three spell damage glyphs, so that's why it's not 1335, it's 1335 plus my uh, spell damage glyphs jewelry here. Uh, and then let's take into consideration spell resistance. So you can see here that UESP's build editor actually even gives you a percentage of mitigation that you're getting. So I'm getting 18% mitigation from spell resistance. So you can see here I'm getting this much resistances from my items. I don't have the Munda Stone. I have uh, 2177 spell resistance from uh, my skills. I have no resistances from spells, nothing into CPs. If I have major resolve, uh, remember that 660 uh, resistances is equal to 1% mitigation. Uh, so major resolve, minor major resolve, and major ward give about 8% mitigation. Minor resolve and minor ward gives you 2% mitigation. So you would just add in 10%, uh, or actually you would have to put in 5280. Actually no, why? It's being weird. I don't know why it's being weird like this, but that's where uh, the buffs would take into consideration here. And so what you want to do when you're using the build editor here, uh, you know, you can put in all your pieces here, you can put in all your armor, your jewelry, your weapons, you can choose to everything about your glyphs. Uh, you can go into skills, put down your skill bars, uh, adjust them accordingly. Uh, I should actually be swapping these around like so, like this. And if you want, you can have like sets active, so for example, you can compare between burning spell weave active and burning spell weave not active just by clicking this button. You can even uh, customize the buffs so that way you know if you want to take into consideration oh I want to see what it's like what my builds are like with raid buffs you know you can do that here you can you know say I have infused torx crusher uh, I have alkash on, on the enemy you know I have major breach on the enemy so you can do all that customization here and then the value that you're going to want to use to compare your different builds is going to be called effective spell power so this is actually um, pretty equal to the building metric that Asayir has here let's take it to look into the calculation so this is what I mean when I say uh, you might see um, this component be expressed this way, so it's Magicka divided by 10.5 plus spell damage. And you have uh, 1 plus uh, the spell crit times crit damage times, and uh, basically UESP just breaks it out, each component out uh, individually. Uh, just remember that because this is all multiplicative, that you can put, put, put them in any order. So even though spell crit times crit damage is second here and it's last here, because it is multiplicative, it doesn't really matter what order you put them in. So this is all here is, uh, so this component here is the uh, attacker bonus, and this here is the one minus the mitigation. Uh, this is also part of the attacker bonus here as well. So effective spell power is what you want to use to compare various builds here. Uh, so this, for example, is, um, let's see, this is Mechanical Acuity, Kina, and Five Piece Burning Spell Weave. Uh, but if I go to a different build, let's see, leave, I have, which build is this? If I go into this build here, this one is with the Lover and running Master Architect instead. So you can see here that I'm actually having a little bit higher here. I do have additional 5% damage done because of uh, Master Architect, so it is assuming that I, I am hitting a Trials or a um, a boss, uh, a dungeon boss here, so that's why I have the additional 5%. And this is probably why it's higher, so if I just take this out, you can see I'm sitting at 84.15 compared to 82.07. Uh, so this is with, without Burning Spell we've active, without any sort of um, raid buffs, uh, this setup is already going to be stronger than uh, the Burning Spell Weave setup. However, like I said, you can 
change things up. So let's say I have Burning Spell Weave active. It's 8864 now compared to 8836. So now they're much closer together here. Um, but you also have to take into consideration, you know, things that like uptime. So Burning Spell Weave has a 66% uptime. So is this actually accurate? Probably not because you're not going to have 100% uptime on Burning Spell Weave. So you also want to take that into consideration as well. So that's something uh, that you can use to compare different builds here. Uh, so now that we have all the equations and stuff out of the way, it's time to clear up a couple of misconceptions here, a couple of misinformation that I've seen being floated around on the official forums, on Reddit, uh, and guild chats, things like that. Uh, so a lot of people say 10.5 is the magic ratio, 10.5 max magicka is equal to 1% additional spell damage. Uh, while that is mostly correct, there are a couple of caveats here. So the first caveat here is going to be with pet damage. Uh, pet damage only scales off of max magicka. It does scale off of um, max, uh, spell damage, but the ratio is actually very, very high here. So if we go over to Sorcerer, and go to Unstable Familiar, you can see here that the B value for spell damage is incredibly small. It's 3 times 10 to the negative 5th, while Magicka is um, 0 0.2, uh, 0.02, I should say. And so the ratio is not actually going to be 10.5. The ratio is actually far, far <laughs> skewed uh, towards, towards Magicka. So that's why uh, the 10.5 only counts for tooltips that are not uh, pets. Uh, so that's pretty much only going to apply to sorcerers that are using pet builds, so Unstable Familiar and the uh, Winged Twilight are two uh, are the two pets that do not scale off of uh, spell damage very well, if at all. I mean, you can pretty much say this is zero. You can see here the ratio is zero. But uh, ultimates that are considered pets, so the Storm Atronach here, this does have a ratio of 10.5. So uh, Max Magicka does boost Storm Atronach and uh, the spell damage also boosts Storm Atronach. Uh, if you go over to the Warden Feral Guardian here, uh, you can see that the ratio is still 10.5. So, so basically, pets do not scale to the 10.5 ratio. Uh, they scale off of Max Magicka almost exclusively. The other uh, misconception that I want to go over, I'm not sure if they have it here, actually. I don't think they do. Um, so, Light Attacks, I know it's here somewhere. Light attacks, uh, they don't scale off of the ratio of 10.5 either. So light attacks actually scale off of a ratio of 40. So this is actually their uh, the formula here. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. So if I just pull up, uh, so 0 0.643855, 3855, you want to take that divided by O, point, uh, and then, oh, where is it, 0 0.016102. I forgot already. Six one. Six one oh oh two. So you can see here that the ratio is closer to forty. Uh, so for light tax, it's going to be a uh, forty max stamina or max magic is equal to one additional uh, damage on your light attacks. And I believe this ratio holds up for heavy attacks too. So if we go down to heavy attacks, uh, it's a little bit different. The ratio is a little bit different. So if we do this, I'm going to copy it this time so I don't have to. This divided by this value. I'm missing a, a decimal point here. It's still around 40. So light and heavy attack scale off of a ratio of 40. So every 40 max magic or stamina is equal to one additional um, damage there. One final um, misconception that I want to clear up is going to be uh, this misconception that of, of what's called diminishing returns. So a lot of people who come from ESO from other MMOs are familiar with this with this term called diminishing returns and that's basically the idea that the more you stack into a certain attribute or a certain trait uh, the fewer and fewer um, increase the lower the lower the increase is going to get. So for example uh, you know if you in uh, let's just say you have like a typical RPG where you have you know strength, intelligence, whatever. Uh, if you you know go from one strength to fifty strength, you see a very linear increase. But from uh, from fifty to let's say a hundred strength, uh, you see a much smaller increase for each point that you put in. That's what's called diminishing returns. Uh, and so a lot of people, a lot of MMOs have implemented diminishing returns, so that way people aren't you know stacking a hundred points into strength and having you know super godly weapon damage or something like that. Um, but uh, but ESO, the only 
fo form of diminishing returns that you see in ESO are going to be coming from CP points uh, because of the way Zos has now shifted a lot of the CP points to be very front loaded. So for your CP nodes, uh, 0 to 50 will contain about 70 to 75% of the uh, max value that you can get from a CP node, and the last 50 will make up that remaining 20, uh, 30 to 25 percent of the nodes. That's the only f source of diminishing returns in ESO. Uh, so you can continue to stack max magicka, spell damage, crit chance, and crit modifiers all you want. And as you can see here, you'll always the ability metric will always increase. Uh, there's no way for you to increase, for example, crit chance and have that lower your damage. The only way that things like this uh, diminishing returns would be present if in a mathematical equation would be if you have a divided by some variable like max magic or something like that. And you don't really see that here. You don't see any sort of exponential term either. And exponential terms would be uh, very indicative of something that has exponential growth uh, or something like that. Or or rather, I should say, I believe it's a logistic curve, uh, the curve that basically goes like like that. Uh, so, so an exponential curve goes up. Uh, what, I'm th what I'm thinking about is going to be something that has a horizontal uh, asymptote, so basically it never crosses a certain value. And so those graphs tend to go like this, and I believe those are actually um, log uh, logarithmic graphs. Uh, so if you have a logarithmic term, then yes, you have diminishing returns somewhere, but you don't see that here in the ability metric um, equation. So there's no such thing as diminishing returns here. However, the game does have a balancing act here because uh, as you stack, for example, let's say you want to stack into critical chance. You want to get 100 critical chance. So you're wearing sets like uh, Leviathan and your or Mother Sorrow. Uh, you know, you're using something like uh, Infallible Aether. You're using the Thief Munda Stone. Uh, so you have, let's say, 100% crit chance. But you also take into consideration, you know, Leviathan and Mother Sorrow, they don't really have any other additional... Um, stat boost, so you're not really getting additional um, spell damage, you're not getting additional max magicka, uh, so that actually ends up reducing certain portions of this equation here. So, you know, if you're running Mother Sorrow, this portion of the equation actually goes down, even though this portion of the equation is going up. So, th there, so there's a little bit of a balancing act there, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily call it diminishing returns, that's more of how the game manages to balance out different sets. Uh, because otherwise, you can just continue to stack, stack any of these values and continue to increase your damage there. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I know that was a lot of information, so please let me know down in the comments if there's anything that I can clarify for you. I tried my best to kind of explain things here. Uh, the links to all of these uh, pages will be in the video description below, so I will link um, this uh, topic from in Tamara Foundry from Asayir. I will link the um, the uh, skill browser here so you guys can take a closer look if you guys want to do the, the nitty gritty. Uh, then I'll also link uh, to the build editor. Uh, not my build, obviously. I will link you to... Um, the actual build editor page. You will need to create an account with the OESP in order to use their tool, but you don't need to, you know, register or anything. You just basically choose a username, choose a password, and, and you're all set. You don't have to like go through an email verification process or anything like that. So it's very, very nice. And another thing too is that you can actually go ahead and look at everybody else's builds here. You can even uh, you know sort them by by class, by race, you can name them. Uh, so it's very useful to see what other people are building and just you know you can kind of take that and uh, take a look at what other people are managing to create and you know see if they are also viable builds as well. Uh, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it informative and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.